the mistake that they make is if this is going to if Tapal's going to be in this, she has to be real. Yes. Because if she's not real, then any interaction that they have is meaningless in the end. Like it's not there's no revelation from Flox that Tapal's to, the projection of Tapal is him somehow talking to himself about thing you know what i mean like there's nothing there's nothing in there it's just a gag and if you really and at the end it's not worth anything because it's not like he's like learned anything new or changed or anything by yeah. by talking to ghost to paul here yeah so if, well, if i could argue he could, Tapal, he could have sorry he, I, I i would say that he could have learned something if he learned that to paul was a hallucination at the peak of his hallucinating you know what i mean like sure Sure. If if he if he came to a realization that the way to Paul is cracking up is a reflection of his own psyche at that point, maybe you can do something. But he literally learns it right at the end of the episode when it's meaningless. Right. Right. And so, if you want to have the two of them actually interacting with each other in the way that they're doing here, I think that she needs to be real because then you have these two. Ca- and it because then you've got this kind of spiritual sequel to the to the pon far episode right where yep. it's yep. where it's to paul in uh in the sexy chamber with uh the, the glitter chamber with with uh trying to ride out pon far with, with <laughs> flocks helping her helping her through it yeah and having those having that sort of mirror where she kind of the the tables are kind of turned now i think would be would have been a nice way to go because he's always so um composed that having somebody else there help him through uh so having to paul there to help him through something that she can relate to even though maybe they don't relate to each other on like a base species level or whatever right. i think yeah. there's there's more in there uh uh that's kind of interesting and also plus like if she's a ghost I, I was I was watching this go like before I was a hundred percent sure like I, I knew she was there was I knew there was something coming at the end about halfway through I'm like she has to be a ghost there, there's no other way that reason they're playing this the way they are but one of the things I kept asking saying was like why why do they keep splitting up if she just hangs around with him anytime he has a hallucination she can say that's not real right so, but right. she can't do that because she's also a hallucination which again is a writerly construct to avoid these like common sense situations. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, it's it's got that horror thing of just separating. And again, if she always shows up post hallucination, which is fitting for Flox's hallucinations. But yeah, I would agree that um, I I think my my pinnacle idea for an episode like this would be Flocks by himself. I, I completely understand why yeah, Paul is yeah. in this episode because otherwise Flocks they'd have to come up with a way where Flocks is talking to himself about literally everything that he's doing. Well, I mean, they, they already did. I mean, he's, he's, he's doing that letter Composing thing. the letter, yeah. It would have been and unbearable he's to halluc- have the whole thing. Well, but he's also hallucinating crew members, so it's not like he can't have anybody to interact with. You know, he's still hallucinating Archer. He's still hallucinating Trip. Oh, but think, you, you mean he would be recognizing that he's hallucinated? Because I, I like the idea of him being completely solitary while everyone else is asleep. You're you're saying that he would have the hallucinations and talk to those people as a get out of jail card for that? Yeah, I think that probably makes the most sense. Because if it's just if it's just him, well, in your situation, what would he be doing? I guess for the whole episode. That, that's where I'm saying that they can't do it. And that's why T'Pol exists because T'Pol adds someone for him to talk to and to kill time and create a. a you could still have the sci-fi problem for Flox, I suppose. Or, I thought that there is a way to do it if it's a, an alien species that's not the Zindi, get on the ship or something like that, which they've done a few mm-hmm. times, I guess. So maybe they don't want to do that again. Uh, I just, I guess this is all really stemming from the fact that I liked Phlox by himself being scared of the noises in the ship. Sure, like I, sure. I, I was, I, I wish that they had built something around that, be it some sort of alien is doing something eventually or something goes wrong with the ship and he has to technically fix it and he's not prepared for it. Instead, they have to put T'Pol in there because they have to have them talk to get through that stuff. And I think that like I was even hyper aware of the fact that the enter- this enterprise ship doesn't have a computer that people can talk to yet. It's too right, early for that. Right. 
that would be the way that it would work in a in a, a post t- this timeline series and stuff. I I don't really have anything. I don't have an idea about how to fix it. I just I liked those moments and to Paul's obviousness to me ruined it. And I also hated Blaylock's performance in this. And I it just every scene she was in, I just felt was getting worse and worse. Even when they're supposed to be sharing meals and sharing like. Uh, sort of bonding or something. I didn't buy any of it because I knew she was fake at that point. So it didn't mm-hmm. it didn't mean anything, and it was kind of a letdown. 